Okay guys, so today we're going to be taking a look at NPM and uh, what NPM is. I am not going to be showing you how to install Node, but when you install Node, you will get the Node Package Manager. It's a pretty simple install, it's just hitting current or the recommended version and just next, 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 it's like any installation. Obviously it's different when you're doing it on Linux or Mac from Windows, but it should be a pretty easy installation no matter what. So when you have installed Node, you can actually go on to npm. It's called npm.js.com and we can search for packages. So I'm gonna be searching for underscore. And usually we get a bunch of results. The first one is usually the one you wanna pick, but there might be packages which are very similar names, so make sure you get the proper one. Here we go. And we're going to be remembering this page for later. I'm in a folder. I'm going to make another folder. I'm going to name it test. In here, I'm going to make a file. And I'm going to call it index.js. Yes. Then I'm going to be opening git bash. If you don't have git bash, you can also use CMD. I would not recommend using CMD because it's a bit funny, but if you want to learn a quick trick to open CMD, you just type CMD up there, press enter, and you have CMD. But you can also just install git bash. It is also another just click, 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 install. There we go. And I am using Visual Studio Code. And if you have Visual Studio Code, you can just type code, code dot and it will actually open in the current directory. But by all means, use whatever editor you would like. In our index.html, we are going to be writing some pretty basic HTML. But first of all, we need to install npm and initialize it. The first command we're going to be running is going to be npm. By running the command npm, you will get a help command. You will also get the same help if you run npm help. You can also do npm-v to get the version. You can also run this command like so with two dashes instead of one and then type version. That's the equivalent to this. And you will see that for all commands, that they have a short version and a long version. You, by the way, you don't need to write the first two commands, only if you want to see the version and you want to get some help. So the first command we got to run to initialize npm is actually called npm init. By running npm init, we will start the process of initializing in PIM. The first question it's going to ask us is the package name. By default, it's going to take the folder you're in, the name of the folder you're in, as the package name. That's fine in this case, but you could write whatever you want. The package name is the name you're going to have up here. So in this case, it's underscore. So we're not going to publish this package, so it's not too important. But if you're publishing your package, then this name is very important. But we're going to be sticking with the default. The next is the version. We're going to be talking about how versioning work in NPM later. But for right now, it is okay. We're not going to have a description. Our entry point, this is another important one. Our entry point is the starting point of our application. In this case, it is by default called index.js. But let's say you had a file called... Um, your main application file was called app. .js. Well, then you would have to change this and then you would have to write app.js here instead. But we are we called it index.js, so that's what we're going to be sticking with. The default is fine. Test command, we're not going to wor worry about that. Get repo, that is if you have a get repo, we are also not going to worry about that. Keywords, keywords are another important thing if you are publishing your package, but the keywords are going to show up down here. All the information that we are specifying right now is the information that will be shown up on NPM if you decide to publish this package. So the versioning, the license, the get repo, the keywords, 
So a lot of these options are only relevant if you're going to publish to npm. Author is just the author. So in this case, I'm just going to write Vincent Lab. Now the licensing is also only really important if you're publishing. And it's the one that's going to show up here. I like MIT, so MIT. Now, the last one is just yes, to say that yes, I like my configuration. There you go. And you will get a package.json. You could also have made this file manually, but there's not really a re reason to make it manually when you have an automatic tool. Uh, I'm going to be deleting this because there's a few different ways to do this. So the next method is actually to type npm in it dash y or dash dash yes that will just run with all the defaults in this tutorial i'm not going to be showing you how to set defaults but you can also set these defaults and you can see now we have a package registration. now you can see that visual studio code highlights that this should not be a upcase string and it should all be lowercase So we're going to be keeping it lowercase. And for good measure, MIT, just change the licensing. Okay. So that is our package.json. Now we can actually get to install packages. So before, when we were on npm, you saw this command up here, npm i. You can just press, you can just click on it, and then you can just paste it in, press enter. And there you go. You have the package. There's a, I'm going to be showing you a few different ways of installing the package. You can also, instead of just the I, type install. That will do the exact same thing. We already have it installed, so it's just going to do nothing. Index.js. We're going to be writing a simple application to test that our underscore works. So we're going to be making a constant named by an underscore. And we're going to set that underscore equal to require. And then in quotes, the package name. There we go. And now if we do underscore dot, you can see that we have all of the functionality of underscore. I'm just going to quickly write, I write a very simple command. We're going to be writing underscore dot now. And there we go. We're going to open our console, type node index. There you go. You can see that we get the current time. The next thing I want to show you is to install packages globally. When you want to install a package like Notemon, if you don't want know, know what Notemon is, it's essentially uh, the same as doing node but it will watch your code and rerun the code every time it sees a change in your code. To install a package globally, globally means that it will be installed for every single application and it won't be dependent on this node modules folder. So you can use it in all of your node applications. The way you do that is just doing npm either i or install node mon or whatever package you want to install globally, dash G, that will install Notemon globally. There you go. Next up, we're going to be talking about versioning. So if you go on here on NPM and you click on versions, you can see that there's a bunch of different versions of this package. So let's say that you didn't want this, which is the default because it's the newest. Let's say you wanted this version down here. So 1.4.4 of that package. Then you would do npm install underscore, and then you would do add, and then whatever version. So 1.4.4 and press enter. There you go. You can see that if we run this application again, we'll actually get an error because now was not a part of underscore at version 1.4.4. 4. 
So we're just quickly gonna update that back to the newest version. There you go. And now you can see it works again. Next up, we, I'm gonna be showing you how to uninstall packages. It's pretty simple, it's npm uninstall underscore. If you wanted to do this for a global package, you just add the dash D. And if underscore was installed globally, it would now be uninstalled. There, you can also type remove instead of uninstall, and that would do the exact same thing. But it wasn't installed, so it wasn't able to remove it. And now you can see if we run our application again, we'll actually get an error saying that the package is not installed. Let's reinstall it. There you go, and because we installed Nodemon, we can actually run this using Nodemon, and that will just watch our file, and every time we make a change, it will automatically restart. Next up, we can also use npm update and package name, and if it was a global package, you add the dash g, I think you get the point by now. If it's global, it has a dash g, if it's not, it doesn't have a dash g. Update. Now, which version will it update it to? That is what we're going to be talking about next. First of all, we're going to be taking a look at what semantic versioning is. Semantic versioning is, is the way Node figures out how versions work. Okay, so this is not a tutorial on semantic versioning, but okay, so I'll just give it my best shot. Okay, so the first number is the major version. You increase that version when your API breaks or you make like an entirely new locking system, like a very big change in your application. The minor version, the minor version is if you add a tiny feature, like maybe you add it so you could also log in with an email. You could still log in with your phone number, but now you could also log in with an email. It wouldn't break anything, therefore it would be a minor version. The last digit determines patches. So let's say that implemented your feature with the email, but it didn't work. And you had already pushed this to production or pushed to whatever system or infrastructure that you're using. Now you have to fix the email. And since you already implemented it, then fixing it wouldn't be a new minor version, but just a patch version. Another way you could think about a patch version would be if you just change the toned a green color or, group or a red color a bit down. That would also be a patch version. Next up, we're going to be taking a look at how do we control what versions Node will actually update to and which it won't update to. So you may see in our package.json, we got a dependencies and then underscore. And then we get this caret. Well, what that means is that it will only update the minor version. So let's say that you were you pushed your package to your friend. You don't include the node modules folder, you just include the package.json. On the new computer, you would just write npm install or npm i. That would just install all of the dependence. These three digits are going to control what version node is going to update it to. It's a bit difficult to explain, but let me give it a try. So the caret symbol, which is the middle symbol, means, which is also the default, which means that if a new version of this package came out, let's say that 3.6.8 came out, or it could be 3.6.2 came out. Then if you had it with a carriage symbol in front, then it would update to 3.6.2. But if you got another version, let's say 4.5.8, so the major version increased, it would not update it. It would only update as far as the minor version. The tilde sign, which is the last one, will only increase the patch version. So if it was 3.4.1, one and the new version of the package when you either ran the update command or pushed it to another computer, the version was 5.8. It would not update to that version because it can only control the patch version. The star symbol, which is the first one, is gonna install the newest version. And if you don't include any of these three characters in front of the version number, then it's just gonna install 
that exact version and only that exact version. The reason why you only want to install a specific version or you only want to maybe update the minor or the patch version is that you know that it works with that specific version. And let's say that you pu push your package up to the NPM store, somebody downloads it and it doesn't work because you put the star version. But when you have the local version, you have the version that works. But if you run an update, you get a new version that maybe break something and then, you know, it just gets complicated. It can break stuff. So staying with the version you know works or in the relative range of that version will greatly decrease the amount of errors that people downloading your package will have. I hope that was a good enough explanation. It is pretty difficult to explain. So next up, we're going to be taking a look at a few other commands. The last command I want to show you is npm root d. That will just show you where all of your global modules are installed. Okay, so one of the last things I want to show you is what happens when you have your package.json and you create a new project and you install it. Okay. So we're going to be making a new folder. We're going to name it test2. And from test one, we are only going to copy the package.json and the index file. And we're going to be opening git bash in this folder. And Visual Studio Code. This would also only be the only files you would push to git. Now you can see that we have our package.json and we have our index.js. And if we run node mon, You can see that we get an error. It says we can't find underscore. And that is because the very first thing you have to do is like I told you in the versioning section is to do npm i or npm install. Make sure to do this in the folder that your node package.json file is stored and your project file. Okay, and now you can see it works. The last thing I just quickly want to go over is scripts. So if you want to add a start script, which a lot of automatic pipelines and stuff like that also uses the package.json file to start your application. So to just have one simple way to start your application, let's say you have an application that's a bit complicated to start, then you can actually install in here in scripts, you can actually type start and then you type the command that it's going to run. In this case, we're going to be running node index dot js and hit save and now in our terminal we can actually run npm start and that will start our application and if you had a test framework you could put in a test command here you can name these whatever you want so let's say we wanted one that was named lap and we maybe we wanted that to run Note mon index.js. I don't know why, but we want if we wanted to. So we do npm lab, and you can see it does not work. Well, why is that? There's a few reserved names of scripts like start and test. There's a few others. I don't. Uh, in top of my head know what they're named but if you name one yourself like lab or development or production then you have to type npm run lab and that will actually start nodeman so guys that was it for now hope you learned something and see you in the next one bye